So now that we got a handle on controlling our player object with the AWSD keys or the, uh, the horizontal and vertical axis vector, let's take a look at controlling uh, some game objects with a point and click. So I have a scenario set up here where I have a cube that's being driven around by uh, a get mouse uh, or a mouse pick event. Um, so I'm just clicking in this space here and I'm, I'm, I'm tracking the point at which I click and telling the cube to move into that direction. So let's see if we can set something like this up. So I'll uh, just jump into a new scene that, that does not have that cube in it and, and I'll get started by creating a game object and I'll create a cube. And just so I get a better sense of what the Z direction is of this object, so whenever we talk about a forward direction, we're talking about the direction that that blue uh, axis points to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to my inspector and I'm gonna bump up the Z value here. I'll just double that to two. And so now I, I have a sense of, of what the Z direction of this object is. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, set this object on the ground. Uh, so I'll just type in zero and you can see that when I, when I zero this out, that's actually kind of going into the ground because this cube is one meter tall uh, and its, uh, its origin is right in the middle of the object, I actually need to lift this up to uh, 0.5. Um, so now that object should be sitting on the ground, so I have the rest of my scene set up so that my ground is at zero. Um, I could also uh, create, there's a couple different ways I could manage this object. Uh, I'll, I'll just drive this cube around, but if, um, I'm going to run into a glitch where the, the cube drives into the ground. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll take a step back and address that a couple of different ways. Um, one way I could do this is I could create a game object, an empty game object and I could set that empty game object to a Y value of zero. So now um, that empty game object is set to the floor, the ground of this object. And now if I take my, my, my cube object here that I have set up and I drag and drop that into my empty game object and I'll just look at the cube here for a second and I'll zero out the, the Z value I'll keep my Y value at 0 0.05. Now if I grab that game object, you can see that it's basically setting its pivot point um, because I've parented that object, it's setting it to the ground. Um, and that can be handy. You can use empty game objects to really adjust the pivot point. And at this point, if I wanted to um, you know, rotate this object, I would rotate around that pivot point. And you can start to see dramatic results if we rotate it around the X. Okay, but I don't really want to rotate it. Um, but so I'm inside this game object. That's one way to control this. I'm going to pull this cube back out and uh, I'll get rid of my empty game object and I'll name this cube. Maybe I'll name it car or tank or something like that. So this is my player object. So the first thing that I want to do to control this object is I want to set up a state machine and I'm going to have a couple different states here. And the first state, this is where we're, we're um, waiting for a mouse pick. So I'll just I'll just say waiting for mouse and uh, I need to go find the input category and I'm looking for not a mouse pick 2D I'm looking for just a mouse pick there it is and I'll double click and so now I have my mouse pick action now the mouse pick action is looking for a lot of information here the first thing it does is cast a ray out into my scene based on where my camera is and it's casting a ray out 100 meters into my scene okay now one of these blocks that I have set into the scene are uh, about eight meters. So let me see if I can just click one of these blocks here. Um, you can see that I have this, this block selected and that block is eight meters square. Um, so I, I, I get a sense of what the scale of my, my scene is. This cube here is uh, one by one by two. Um, so the Z axis there is, is two. So uh, casting a ray 100 meters into the scene, I'll, I'll basically, anything my camera sees, I'll be able to select. Uh, so let me go back to my cube. I'll select my cube. I'll go back to my action. So I'm casting a ray 100 meters. That, that's actually further than I need to be, but I'll let it default. Um, and then there's a couple of variables that, that the mouse pick is, is looking to store information in. Uh, the first one here, if I just roll my mouse over, um, the first one is storing a did pick object, and that's a bool. Um, I can track which game object is, is selected, and in this case, I'll just be clicking on, on various cubes or, or, or terrain or, or ground plane or whatever. What I'm really interested in storing is the store point. 
um, and I need to store that into a vector three. So I'll jump over to my variables tab and I'll create um, a point pick variable and I'll make sure that that's set to a vector three and I'll add that so that I can start to use it and I'll go back over to my state. So when I go to store point, I'll click the drop down menu and choose that new variable. And, uh, and you can see I'm getting some feedback here. I, I have debug turned on. And I wanna make sure that I, that I check my mouse pick every frame. Otherwise, it'll only check it once. And what I want is I wanna be able to hit the play button. And as I roll my mouse around, whoops, I have that set to maximize. Let me turn that back off so I can debug this. I'll just toggle that button off and I'll hit play. And so what I'm looking for is as I roll my mouse around, Try that again, let me highlight that, that action. Let me jump back in here. I was, I was playing with some of the settings inside Playmaker here and uh, I'll just turn that back on to automatically set the state. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. So you can see that as I roll my mouse around, this store point is picking up all the different points that, that uh, uh, based on where my mouse is. Okay, so I'm storing that point as I roll the mouse, so I'm testing that every frame. The next thing that I want to do is I want to send this off to a different state based on a mouse click. Okay, now I could do mouse down, um, but what I really want to do is uh, I'm looking for some input, and I want to get mouse button up. And the idea here is that if I, if I, if I do a get mouse down and, and I'm rolling around to pick a point, when I actually pick the point, when I press the mouse down, my object is going to take off into that direction once I get this whole action set up. And I, I basically want to correct for this if, uh, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm rolling my mouse around trying to figure out what point, and if I click down and decide that, oh, I really don't want that point, I can roll my mouse somewhere else and then release my mouse up, and then have it send off to that point. So I'm actually gonna look for a mouse up instead of a mouse down. So I'll select my state here. I'm looking for some input and I wanna get mouse button up. I'll double click on that and I'm looking for a left mouse button click. Uh, and then I need to create an event to fire this off when I release my mouse. So I'll just uh, call this um, uh, mouse up and I'll right click and add this as a transition and I'll add another state. So when I release my mouse, I'll just go back here into the waiting for mouse state, the get mouse button up, I'm listening for a left mouse. And when that mouse comes up, I wanna send off that mouse up event. So now I'm in the, in the second state and I'll call this, uh, I'll just simply call this move or move to point to whatever point we stored. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to control this object. I want to send it to the point um, that we're storing in this first state. So I have my mouse pick. I know when I roll my mouse around here, I'm looking at that store point variable and I see that updating. And when I click and release the mouse, it's firing off to this uh, move point state. So in this move point state, what I want to do is I want to go and do a transform action. And uh, I got a couple of different options here. What I could do is do a move towards. So I'll double click. And the move towards is use, it's gonna use the game object of the owner, which is the cube. That's the, this action, the, the, the state machine is attached to the cube. Um, I don't want a target action, but what I want is a target position. And I'll change that from a hard-coded position of zero, zero, zero to a variable and I'll use that, that point pick vector three variable that we're, that we're capturing in this first state. Um, I have the ignore vertical. I'm gonna leave that off for a minute. I'm gonna let, let everything else default and you'll see that when I go find my mouse point and I click and I release, you can see that my, my cube starts to move in that general direction. Now, there's a little bit of a glitch here and I'll try to frame my scene camera here to demonstrate this and I'll reset my scene. Um, when I roll my mouse over and I'll, I'll just click, you can see that my, my uh, cube starts to go down into the ground, and that's because uh, the, the Y is being tracked here. And what we could do, a quick fix, is to ignore a vertical. So we're ignoring that Y value of, of the vector 3. Now this, um, this move to or move towards direction is pretty simple. You can see that 
as I click around, I'm trying to reset my action. I can only move one time. It's because I haven't created the loop that I need here to reset and listen for another mouse pick. So let me, let me do that. Um, so what I'll do, first thing I'll do is I'll create another event and I'll call this reset. And I'll add that as a transition and I'll send that reset action back to waiting for mouse input. Uh, I'll go back to my mouse point state and I'm looking for a finished event. So when it arrives at the point uh, that we wanna, that we've, we've chosen, we can set that finish event to reset. So now when I click the play button, I'll mouse up. Once it arrives at its point, you can see that that action returns back. So we have a reset. Now we do have a glitch and it may not be a glitch, um, but right now I can't change the direction. When this is in route, I can't click around and pick a new point. Okay, it's only after this, uh, that it ar arrived at, at the vector three that we stored um, that it resets itself. And, and uh, I want a little bit more control. I wanna change my mind that if I say, okay, move over to this point here and say, yeah, I don't want it to move over to that point. I wanna click over on this point. So what I can do is go back into this move point and listen for a mouse down. And if we get a mouse down event during this, this move, we can cause that to reset it as well. So I'll just go back to my input and I wanna get mouse button down. And I'm, I'm, oops, not get button down. I chose the wrong option. Let me remove this action. I'm looking for get mouse button down. And on left click, I'll cause that to reset as well. And so now the result that I have now is that at any point, when I choose my point, I can just click around and change that uh, direction at, or, or that point that it's moving towards at uh, any time in this action loop. Okay, so uh, that's the basic setup that we're gonna operate off of in the next uh, presentation. Uh, we'll refine this a little bit more and make it a little bit more sophisticated, but we'll do that in the next presentation.